Oh no. Welcome to General Physics Lab. Today we will be talking about hot measurement. Yes. The main objectives of this lab is to become familiar with basic instruments to measure distance and then use those instruments to take measurements and calculate densities of various metal cylinders. The tools you'll be using in lab today, the meter stick, ooh, various metal cylinders, those are the things you'll be measuring, a triple beam balance to measure mass, a veneer caliper to measure a distance, and a micrometer to measure different distances. Uh, instructors and TAs, totally there to rock your world, guys. So the main concept you'll be dealing with today is accuracy. More specifically, accuracy within measurements and calculations. In general, when talking about accuracy, you want to bring up significant figures. Now, significant figures are the number of decimal places shown in experimental measurements. So let's talk about 52.01 centimeters. This is accurate up to 0.01 centimeters and gives you four significant figures, which means it's a pretty accurate measurement. Now, 13.0 centimeters, this is more like something you'd read off of your ruler. It's accurate up to 0.1 centimeters and has three significant figures. Now, 170 only has two significant figures, even though you see that zero, because it's only accurate up to 10 centimeters. So it's not as great of a measurement as we would like to see. Now, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing in concern with significant figures is in your lab manual. You really need to read it. It's super important, okay? So where do we see significant figures and accuracy in action? Well, in measurements, of course. So let's say we want to find the area of this surface. We pull out our ruler, we measure the length, we measure the width, and then we do some more measuring. No, we just plug it into the area formula and we bam, multiply and get this awesome number. But just because our calculator actually gives us this number doesn't mean all of those digits are significant. So when multiplying, we need to remember that our final answer is limited by the number of significant figures in our original data. So instead of getting 19.08, we only get 19 centimeters squared. So we need to get better accuracy. And to get better accuracy, we use different tools. In this case, we'll use a veneer caliper, which is this one right here, and then a micrometer, which is this one right here. Okay, so I know you're wondering, how do I use these awesome tools? Let me show you. Take a breath, don't get too excited. So, so what is so great about the veneer caliper? In general, it allows for better accuracy when you're taking measurements. So let's take a closer look at the veneer caliper. So first you see two different scales. One is the inches or US customary units. The second is metric scale. We will only be using the metric scale in this lab, like ever. All right, so let's just go ahead and remove the inches scale. That's right, it's just disappeared. So on the main scale here, you'll see centimeters, okay? And then on this top scale, top scale right there is the veneer scale. And these are the two scales that you'll be reading off of to take measurements. So let's look at the accuracy of a vernier scale. Let's calculate it in some mystic way. So first, when you look at a vernier caliper, you're going to want to identify the main scale and the vernier scale. Then you're going to look at the smallest divisions and the total number of divisions on the vernier scale. So the smallest division on the main scale for this one is one millimeter. Now, the total number of divisions on the vernier scale is 10. Ooh, 10 total divisions. So to actually calculate the accuracy of this vernier caliper, you're going to go ahead and magically write super fast and do one millimeter divided by 10, which will give you an accuracy of 0.1 millimeter. So this vernier caliper is accurate up to 0.1 millimeters. Yay! Now let's take a look at the real vernier caliper that possibly you will be using in lab today. There's a possibility you won't be. Okay, so now, when looking at this one, we can go ahead and calculate the accuracy in the same way. We want to look at the smallest division on the main scale in comparison to the total number of divisions on the veneer scale. Okay, so we've got about uh, 50, 50 divisions on the veneer scale, and the smallest division here is going to be one millimeter. So again, we'll have uh, the smallest division on the millimeter, the, the smallest division on the main scale, one millimeter, divided by 50, the total number of divisions on the vernier scale. Okay, so we're going to calculate this one millimeter divided by 50 and this will give us an accuracy of 0 0.02 millimeters. Okay, or we can convert that into centimeters and be 0 0.002 centimeters. Ooh, I love zeros. <laughs> All right, so let's see the veneer caliper in action. Right now I'm going to show you how to actually read the veneer caliper. Cool beans? Cool beans. All right, so you go ahead and 
open up your vernier caliper, put your object in there, in this case it's the same box we were measuring before, and then you want to see where the zero on the vernier scale lines up best with the main scale. In this situation, it's going to be 3.6 centimeters, okay? And so that's our main reading. And then you're going to look at where the veneer scale and the main scale line up best, like overall. Which line is like right there? And so for this one, it's where the main reading, on the main scale it reads 6, and the veneer scale reads uh, 4.8. And so that's going to actually translate into 0 0.48, giving us the measurement of 3.648 centimeters. So that gives us four significant figures with accuracy up to the thousandths of a centimeter. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the, measuring the length of this box. So again, we're going to look where the zero lines up best and where the main scale and the veneer scale line up best. And so for this one, it's going to be 5.3, and the, main, the total reading is going to be 5.360 centimeters. Okay, so that's going to be our length. We can go ahead and plug these measurements into the area formula again. Formulator. formula calculated out and remember our answer is going to be limited by our original data so we had four, di four significant figures in our original data so our final answer will be 19.55 centimeters squared again four significant digits so now let's take our analysis of this box one step further let's look at the volume of the box so we've got the width we've got the length now let's measure the height of the box to do that let me introduce you to my friend Mr. Micrometer so let's look at the accuracy of Mr. Micrometer. And to look at the accuracy of Mr. Micrometer, we really got to take a closer look and see exactly what's going on. So that top scale is measured in millimeters, that bottom scale is measured in 0.5 millimeters, and then that thimble's 50 divisions with the main line right there. So we're going to go ahead and calculate the accuracy with our previous knowledge that we've acquired. So the smallest division on our main scale is going to be 0.5 millimeters. And we're going to go ahead and with 50 divisions on the alternate scale, we're going to divide 0.5 millimeters by 50 and then get uh, our accuracy reading of 0 0.01 millimeters. So, Mr. Micrometer is accurate up to 0 0.01 millimeters. So, remember that there's a conversion between millimeters and centimeters. Okay, so, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our measurement. We're going to secure our object in our micrometer and then we're going to zoom in closely and actually take the reading. So we've got that main scale measured in, measured in millimeters and we can just count over to be 12 point and then it drops down to 0.5 millimeters and then we're going to see where that thimble lines up best with that main line and right now it's going to line up at 45 so that's 0.45 millimeters so our main reading is going to be 12.95 millimeters so we can convert that to centimeters and see that it's actually 1.295 centimeters and so we can go ahead and plug that into the volume formula which is V equals L times W times H and we need to be mindful of significant figures and then we can like blow everybody's mind with how awesome we are. So let's talk about values. When we're in the lab, we're getting all these measurements, we're making all these calculations, and we're like, hey, my value is awesome. And then somebody's like, no, my value is awesome. So we need to figure out how to compare these two things. So we have two different tools, percent difference and percent error. The one you use is dependent upon what you're comparing. Okay, so for percent difference, 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 it's the comparison of two experimental values. So two different experimental values are what you guys would find in the lab and you're comparing them between yourselves, okay? And that's just going to be one minus the other over the average of the two times 100%. The formulas in the book, you're good. Okay, so for percent error, it's an accepted value versus an experimental. So an accepted value would be something that you would find in your textbook. An experimental value would be something that you yourself would measure in the lab or create. Hmm. Okay, so for the formula for uh, percent error, it's going to be the experimental minus the accepted over the accepted times 100%. Again, formulas in your lab notebook. So fast review, accuracy, huge. That's what we're going for. Significant figures. To get better significant figures, we use different tools, near caliber and the micrometer. Then we compare our values using percent difference and percent error. Whew. Fast. All right, so a quick run through of the actual procedure that you'll be doing in lab today. First, you're going to go ahead and get your four metal cylinders. Yay! Then you're going to measure the length, diameter, and mass using your new tools Woo to uh, get those things. Then you're going to calculate the volume of each cylinder and then the density of the cylinder. Now, the density values are what you're going to be comparing to an accepted value. So you're going to be comparing an accepted value to an experimental. Okay, then you're going to 
produce a mind-blowing write-up, which I'm going to read, and then you're done. And life is good. And that is the end of lab today.